Right, today is the first in our series of the how to maintenance videos and we're going to start with something pretty simple, how to fit a chain. Well I say pretty simple but it's amazing how many people seem to mess it up. If you know how to do it, don't watch this video, but if you're at all unsure then why not watch it. Right, so we're going to start with a Shimano chain uh, just because it's a little bit fiddlier in some ways than the SRAM, uh, there's a bit more to show about it. but. A lot of things cross over, so if you can fit one of these, I'll show a SRAM at the end, but if you can fit one of these, you can fit a SRAM. Okay, so we start off with a uh, brand new chain. First thing to do with a new, if you're fitting a new chain is decide what length it's got to be. Because if you do it too short, you'll rip off your rear derailleur, and if you do it too long, it'll just flap around and it's a waste of time. It won't work as well. There are several different ways to uh, check your chain's the right length. Uh, I think my way's fairly simple, so I'll show you how to do that. Basically, you fit the chain around the chain ring, round the largest cassette on your, uh, on your sprockets, and then you miss out the rear mech. Hold it like that, so you can see. So, And then what you want to do, so that's coming to that link there, and then you want to add two full links. So that's one fat bit, one thin bit, another fat bit, another thin bit. So that link there is where we want to split the chain. So keeping my fingers on that link, I'll get the chain tool. We shall put that in. Now you want to make sure your pin on your chain tool isn't bent or anything because that won't help matters. And then you push your pin through. Now ideally you don't want to push it all the way out but that's that's, that's a bit of an old school thing really because some chains used to be able to join without using a special pin so it made it easier then to push that pin back in afterwards you can sort of do that with a Shimano pin in desperation but it's not recommended because it will be uh, much weaker than if you use a proper joining pin which we're going to use now okay so the chain is now the correct length just put it on the small sprocket now just makes it easier, there's less tension feed it through the rear mech making sure you get it the right side of any pins and stuff that goes on in there put it back through here making sure it's through the chain device properly now with a Shimano chain they do recommend grab that before I lose it they do recommend that the way you join it is with this outer plates here on the front part of the chain and this thinner part on the back they reckon it makes a stronger join not entirely sure how it does but they say it does so that's the way we'll do it this is the special Shimano joining pin which we're going to use. It's basically slightly fatter than a normal pin so when it goes in the, the hole it creates a real good wedge if you pushed an old one out. So hold those together, put that in and that should hold it. So the guiding bit's gone in, made it easy so it's holding the chain together. Then we get our chain tool to unwind it a bit. Put the chain in there and making sure everything is properly aligned we then screw the pin in basically we need to make sure that, that is should you should feel it sort of pop in and then it should when you take this out it should be pretty flush on both sides and we haven't got a stiff link at all it's totally smooth so obviously we now need to get rid of this bit here so you just get a pair of pliers get a grip on it snap off job done just check it's flush both sides, well it's, it's even both sides so the pin's properly located and there we go we have one chain that is on and joined and the correct length the only thing I would say about correct length that I forgot to say earlier which well, I probably should have done is that that rule of adding two links is uh, good for pretty much all bikes apart from some full suspensions where you get a lot of chain growth so if you're in any doubt at all and you want to do a real proper job the first time you put a new chain on make sure it's spot on length is if you've got an air shock let the air out of the shock or take the coil spring off if you've got a coil spring shock and do it when the suspension's fully compressed and check that the chain doesn't suddenly get too short when it's at full compression because that, that's another thing a lot of people do is they fit the chain's perfect length when the bike's uncompressed as soon as it compresses lengthens the chain and it'll rip the rear mech off the last thing you want really. The final thing is uh, if you're wondering why you'd want to fit in your chain well it's simply because your chain wears uh, and if you replace your chain fairly regularly uh, well before it gets to a certain point you should get away without replacing your cassette and it'll save wear on your chain and cassette and certainly with some cassettes like an XTR cassette or something you're talking 
mega bucks so replacing your chain which is the cheapest bit regularly will make that last longer and save you money in the long run so easiest way and worth its cost in the long run is getting a tool like this a chain checker and it's simple to use you just put it on the chain locate it in there and then you push push this lever and basically that that's obviously this is a new chain it's never zero but it's about what's that it's about point just over 0.25 and when you get to one you, well one if you go over one it's really too late it'll already have started to wear to fit this and if you put a new chain on it'll probably slip so if you keep an eye on your chain regularly and replace it before it gets to uh, one then jobs are good and, and you'll get several chains worth out of one cassette so it's worth buying one of them or something similar that's it till next time stay tuned and keep it talked